This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you an exclusive interview with Afghanistan Ambassador to India, Farid Mamunzai. Interviewer is Dr. Atul Kumar Tiwari, AIR Foreign Affairs Editor. Namaskar and welcome to this edition of Spotlight. Today we have with us the Ambassador of Afghanistan in India, His Excellency Farid Mamunzai. He took over as the Ambassador of Afghanistan to India in March 2021. Earlier, he has served as an advisor to the Afghanistan Minister of Foreign Affairs during 2020-21. He has also worked as a senior political advisor at the National Security Council of Afghanistan and as Deputy Director General for Policy and Technical Affairs. Ambassador Mamunzai has worked for several UN and international development agencies as an independent consultant in the past. Welcome once again to our studio, sir. Namaskar and thank you for having me. Ambassador, at the outset, our heartfelt condolence for the earthquake that claimed series of lives in Paktika and the coast province. What is the situation there now? Thank you for the sympathy and the kindness, not only shown by you, but by people of India and the government of India, particularly by the Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji. The earthquake that took place at a magnitude of 59 Rector scale in the southeast of the country, killing almost 1,200 people and injuring around 3,000 people, had hit three provinces very severely, which include the provinces of Paktika, Host, and Ningrahar. At least 150 children were killed and nearly 250 children were injured, and almost 100 children have been orphaned or left unaccompanied as a result of this tremor. Early finding shows that 2,000 homes have been destroyed, with more than 4,000 being severely or partly damaged. Rescue operations and humanitarian support are being carried out, but that is not sufficient to fully address the problems that the people of those three provinces are faced with. The situation still remains dire, and humanitarian assistance need to increase in the next few days in order to ease the suffering of those people. Ambassador, you rightly pointed out the humanitarian assistance need to increase to mitigate the sufferings of the people. If you may recall, India as a true first responder came out for the assistance and a technical team was sent to Kabul to help in relief operations and it was followed by 27 metric tons of emergency relief materials being sent to meet the needs of the people in the earthquake affected areas. What are your expectations? from India. I appreciate the support extended by India and I am touched by the words of the Prime Minister that India stands by you when he announced the support of Afghanistan. At the moment we look at first aid kit support, tents, sleeping bags and those materials, those relief items needed during or the aftermath of an earthquake. Several countries in the region, particularly India, had sent 27 metric ton of assistance and more assistance is going to be there on the way. We require medical assistance in the aftermath of this deadly earthquake now. In, in the medium and long term, we require reconstruction efforts in order to build those thousands of destroyed and damaged homes. People of those areas come from very destitute backgrounds. They don't have the required economic resources to go back to ordinary lives. They would require some help, some help in the form of financial resources and extending them the reconstruction assistance that they would require. Whenever any disaster strikes a country, food security becomes another issue because the people, the supply of foods and other relief materials, they are really hampered in a big way. We have seen how in the past the supplies of food material, especially pertaining to the wheat supplies, India has taken a lead. And in fact, during this period, we saw that 3,000 metric tons of wheat was supplied and as promised by our Prime Minister, out of the committed supplies of 50,000 metric tons of wheat, 33,000 metric tons of wheat has so far reached Afghanistan. How is the progress of these shipments and how are they being distributed to the people in Afghanistan? Well, India played an extremely relevant role in rebuilding Afghanistan over the past 20 years. 
and is rightly put by Indian government to consider neighborhood as their immediate priority for helping and assisting. They came in February this year when India committed to supply 50,000 metric ton of wheat and so far we had seen the delivery of almost 70% of that wheat. The remaining 30% is going to be delivered before the end of July. So less than in a month time we expect the delivery of the remaining 30% to Afghanistan. Now this wheat is shipped into Afghanistan through Pakistan and handed over to WFP, the World Food Program, receive this wheat, they are the recipient of it. And then they are further redistributed to the needy communities. Uh, WFP have been fulfilling a very valuable vacuum by delivering wheat across the country on a daily basis. Around the clock they have been making deliveries to areas where they require food, where those communities are faced with food shortage. What we see on the ground is that India is not only providing us a very fresh quality of wheat, but at a very important and critical time when the country is faced with a lot of food shortage. There are warnings from the UN agencies that more than 70% of the population is faced with food shortage. So this 50,000 wheat, which has been one of the largest food contribution by any country in this region so far has been very well received by the Afghan people. Ambassador, the international community has called for the formation of a truly inclusive government in Afghanistan and for a lasting peace what is required is the elimination of UN Security Council proscribed terror groups. Terrorism has been an area of concern. What is your take on fighting the menace of terrorism together and in a concerted manner so that the people are not at the receiving end in any part of the globe. Well, it's a sad reality that Afghanistan is often related with terror networks and terrorism, yet we are victims of all menaces and all manifestation of terrorism ourselves. There has been no Afghans involved in nine the attacks on Twin Towers and on 9-11, the bombing of 7-7 in London, the bombing in Madrid, in Melbourne, on Taj Hotel in Mumbai, on India's parliament, on Palwama. No Afghan has carried out any regional or international attacks. Yet we are sadly associated with global terrorism. Terrorism is not an Afghan phenomena. It is a regional and international phenomena where extremists were brought into Afghanistan in the late 70s and early 80s to counter then Soviet Union. And after the withdrawal of Soviet Union, those people left behind in Afghanistan. And they began to gradually make our people hostage and turn Afghanistan into a safe haven for terrorism. With the forceful seizure of Kabul by Taliban again in 2021, and there are increasing concerns from the international community. The recent UN reports suggest that terror activities have increased in Afghanistan. Training camps have increased across the country. And what we Afghan consider the fact is that Taliban and a lot of these terrorist organizations, they have symbiotic relations. One thrive on another. One is necessary for the existence and development of another terror group. And that's why a lot of Afghans would speak about convening the Lwe Jirga, forming a government where checks and balances would be ensured. And in that regard, we require the help of countries like India, the Western countries, other responsible nations, to encourage Taliban to come on board and let go of violence, let go of their links with terrorist organizations. This is something of great concern to our people, and we don't want to pay yet another cost for something that the Afghan had not done, or for something that the Afghan had never committed. We are framed, we are colored with the atrocities of terrorism committed by somebody else under our name is not justice to the Afghan people. Ambassador, talking about the relations between India and Afghanistan, especially in terms of the trade, commerce, and people-to-people -people contacts, what we have seen in the past that the two countries were partners in progress of the region for the benefit of the people of both the countries. There has been trade 
and commerce linkages over the years we have been trying to carve out new routes maybe through the chabahar or through other areas how do you look at the prospects of furthering the trade and commerce linkages maybe and some years to come between two countries to some of these new routes all the alternative routes well the opening of chabahar port provides a new route for afghanistan and india creating viable opportunities connecting with potential markets connectivity in afghanistan can boost the untapped potential in increasing trade with india central asia in in other parts of the world so chabahar presents a major milestone in the new era of enhanced connectivity for Afghanistan we consider ourselves to be located at the roundabout of this region where we share border with six big countries in this region we are a land bridge between south asia and central asia and a land bridge between south asia and gulf and middle east through iran so afghanistan is uniquely positioned to connect and transform this region economically South Asia sadly is one of the least economically integrated parts of the world with very limited trade among ourselves with very limited human interaction among ourselves so the british geopolitics of this region had negative impact on not only on politics but on the economy and overall growth of this part of the world so we are in favor of more trade more regional integration more regional cooperation and india has taken appropriate steps by initiating projects like chabahar projects like instac and several other small scale projects like yer corridor between afghanistan and india sark visas the functioning of sark university here and other exemplary initiatives like vaccine maitri in order to ensure that we are going to thrive this region economically we would have to forget the past and live with the present reality of today's world so as they say in hindi zara nam ho to ye mutthi bahut zarkhez hai saaki i think that political goodwill on part of all countries in this region is important to ensure that we transform south asia and central asia into an economic miracle you spoke about the goodwill we have a lot of afghan students undertaking their studies in india in different streams what role do you perceive from them when they go back to afghanistan india has been very generous with educating our youth over the past 20 years we had seen thousands of afghan youth graduating from indian universities in many fields in many disciplines we had indian educated afghans in afghan cabinet right from president karzai who was educated in india and in shimla we had many other ministers provincial governors member of parliaments leaders in the private sector and other senior government officials in government who were trained by many indian universities so india had provided us that soft skill required to run afghanistan politically economically and also socially i think education is the best gift that a nation can give to another nation we have been receiving the valuable gift of education from india across the board there are presently 14000 afghan students in india from kashmir to kanyakumari there are hardly in a state where there would be no afghan student that does not only equip them with the skills that we require in afghanistan but they also bond that human relation that form that human bonding between that particular community where that student live and study in afghanistan who come from different cities provinces and districts of afghanistan so they are our true assets they are the human skill set we require to run our society we appreciate the assistance extended by the indian government over the years despite the fall of the republic our students continue to study in many of these universities and we hope that that partnership would continue thanks a lot ambassador for sharing your valuable insights and sparing your time with all in the radio we look forward to meet again next time thank, thank you, you sir thank you very much thank you for having me you were listening to an exclusive interview with afghanistan ambassador to india farid mamunzai interviewer was dr atul kumar tiwari eir foreign affairs editor this program was produced and presented by the news services division of all india radio You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsttalks@gmail.com.